Hey guys, Eric and Templar here with a reactionary review of The Descendants. You're probably wondering why is he reviewing this movie? This seems completely random. Well, my dad was watching it one day and I came along and I'm like, hmm, this looks kind of interesting. I might as well sit down and watch it. Worst case scenario, I can always do something on my phone while I'm watching it. So I started watching it and I'm like, this movie is actually really interesting. Um, it's really good. And I was kind of surprised, especially at the end, uh, this movie actually does have, not a particularly um, complex, but it does have a definitively uh, traditionalist feel to it in a lot of ways. Um, so let's go into the premise of the movie. So the main character, um, Matt, is a, um, well, Matt King, played by George Clooney, is a Honolulu-based lawyer and land baron. Uh, he is the trustee of 25,000 acres of undeveloped land on Kauai Island. Now, I don't know that much about Hawaii, but uh, I think that's one of the big islands. Uh, it's not the biggest island, but it's one of them. So that land was given to his family, I think, 150 years ago by the Kamehameha dynasty, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, his, uh, what if his ancestors had done a great service for one of the Hawaiian kings or queens, and they had given that land to him and all his descendants. Um, George Clooney is obviously a white guy, but from their understanding, um, they ha have some blood of native Hawaiians in them. Uh, it's probably a very small amount, but they are descendant from a family of native Hawaiians who held that land, and it's been in their generation for 150 years. And it is their legacy and it is um, a symbol of their family. It's part of their identity. Um, Matt is interesting because of all his family, most of them have left Hawaii and gone to America. And they've squandered their inheritances. Um, they, most of them are broke, etc. Because uh, they were kind of a great aristocratic family. And this and a couple other small properties, were, which Matt owns personally, are all that remains of the family's once great wealth and fortune uh, when they were Hawaiian aristocrats. So the other people have squandered their inheritance and are living basically poor over mortgaged lives uh, while Matt remains on Hawaii uh, living off of his um, his stuff as a lawyer and not exploiting um, the land that he's in trust for. And to me this kind of represents, and he states this pretty um, clearly later, um, a, that he has a tie to the land. Um, near the end of the movie, he states, we have a tie to this land, we are of it, we are born from it, and, and we will remain here. So the fact that he maintains his wealth and all the people who leave Hawaii lose their wealth, I think is kind of symbolic on them losing touch with their past and with their the traditions of their people. So the movie kind of opens with his wife Elizabeth getting in a boating accident. Oh, sorry, I'm... Um, Sorry, side note. Um, the the uh, land is coming up uh, to the end of its, um, of its life cycle. For whatever reason, they confiscate land and trust after a certain number of years. Uh, and it's going to end in seven years. Uh, there's a number of ways they can deal with this. The one that most of the people want to do is um, sell the land because it's, it's this massive plot of land in Hawaii for hundreds of millions of dollars. So they're pressuring Matt to do that. So amidst this background, his wife has a, a, a boating accident. Uh, so with her hospitalized, uh, he calls his two daughters back from where they are. Uh, both his daughters are troubled. There is Scotty, who is the young one, and there's Alex, who's the older one. Um, his older daughter, Alex, has a history of substance abuse, um just misbehaving in general and harbors a deep hatred towards their mother, uh, her mother Elizabeth, although this has not been really explored yet. Uh, his other daughter um, bullies people and is kind of a brat. So um, basically his, his older daughter comes back and she has a fight with her father because she refuses to go see her mother in the hospital. And upon confronting her, Matt discovers that um, his wife was having an affair with some random guy. Um, and this, this utterly devastates Matt, who, while he um, realized his life wasn't perfect, he always thought of himself as trying to be a good patriarch for the family. 
Uh, he provided for his wife. He provided for both of their daughters. He more or less did everything that was expected of him. And he's kind of a bit of a sullen and introverted guy. Uh, but he kind of feels like he he did what was expected of him. But his wife wanted action and thrills, etc. So they so he goes and um, confronts two family friends who didn't tell him about the affair. And they tell Matt that his wife wanted to leave him for her lover, Brian Speer, a real estate agent. After Matt angrily kind of storms out because they didn't tell him that his wife was having an affair, and as far as we can tell, he's never had an affair. He's always been loyal to his wife, even if their marriage has been rocky. Um, so Matt arranges for those two to go say Elizabeth goodbye, and he decides that Speer should have an opportunity to go and say goodbye to his wife as well. Uh, which is kind of cucked. I mean, like, he's telling the guy who is having sex with his wife to, like, go say goodbye to her. It, it kind of is. I get the impression he kind of wanted to, like, just find out what was happening and maybe, like, get some revenge. Um, so, yeah, so let's see here. So then they, um, so he and his girls, along with Matt, sorry, Brian, uh, Brian, who is a, um, no, Matt. Sorry. No. Sid. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Okay, so Alex, the older daughter, has a friend named Sid who's kind of like uh, a skater guy, and he's always like, yo, what's happening, guys? And he's kind of like a stoner. So he comes along with them. So they go to the big island um, where they meet the... Um, where they find out that the guy that um, his wife is having an affair with is the brother-in-law of the real estate developer that they want to sell the land to. And that, um, Brian Spear, uh, the guy who is having sex with his wife, stands to make a small fortune if the land is actually sold. So it's kind of interesting how this all ties in together. So, essentially we have a guy who, um, is kind of the anti-traditional force of the movie. Um, he's trying to steal away, uh, the main character's wife and at the same time also kind of steal away part of his inheritance and part of his legacy. So, Matt goes to the um, the house of uh, Brian Spear to find out that he's married. I think he has children. And he um, goes to his house and he says he used to know the person who lived there and he wanted to see uh, the house again, which is true because he's a land developer and a lawyer, like a real estate lawyer, so he has been to all kinds of different houses across Hawaii. So he confronts Brian Spear and and um, tells him that Elizabeth is dying and offers him an opportunity to see her for one last time. So Brian declines that while admitting that although Elizabeth was in love with him and that she was going to leave Matt to marry him, uh, he, he felt absolutely nothing for her and he just wanted to have sex with her um, and he never would have considered leaving his life for her, wife for her. Um... So I, I kind of find that all interesting. Um, I kind of find it interesting that the main character isn't really presented as being a villain. He's a bit cold and distant, uh, but at no point in the movie do they really try to justify his wife's uh, betrayal of him. Matt also has an interesting scene where he talks to um, Brian Spears' wife without really uh, giving away who he is, and they just have a discussion about children. <clears throat> and ultimately, Matt kind of has... A feeling that um, even if Brian Spear is is a is a terrible guy, his wife is a very sweet and loving woman, and he doesn't want to put her through what finding out about the affair would do. And he, I think, he more or less um, intimidates Brian and tells him, "You're going to be faithful to your wife from now on, and you're going to raise your kids." And then he kind of leaves. So. Matt is an interesting character because he kind of throughout the movie tries to do the right thing. And he has numerous opportunities to take adv take revenge and to do kind of petty things. Like he could have just cancelled the land deal at any point in time just to spite Brian Spear. Um, he could have told his wife about the affair. He could have done all kinds of other things, but um, he, he didn't. Uh, the only person who really... Uh, attacks him throughout the movie is the father of his um, wife in a coma who basically calls him uh, not being generous and loving enough. Uh, he gets angry at him for not 
basically selling the land that his family's owned for generations uh, to get more money so that he could just buy his wife presents and expensive vacations, etc. And they had to be content with living on their big plot of land in their large house in the middle of Hawaii um, on a high salary. So that that's like he should have apparently sold it like parts of the land off to fund his wife's extravagant lifestyle instead of only living an upper class lifestyle. She should have been living a upper upper class lifestyle. Um, so let's see here. Um, so yeah, so there's a scene where they're back at the hospital and Elizabeth's father is just berating Matt and just calling him the worst husband in the world and just calling him like a bad guy, etc. And he decides to take the high road and not tell him that his wife was having an affair and about the things she was involved with. Um, because he believes it would kill him. And he doesn't want the guy to have a heart attack and die because he cares about him. And he still cares about his wife and how she would feel if her father died, uh, even if that's the case. So then, um, throughout the movie, we've kind of had some bonding. Um, the, the movie is also kind of about um, Matt reestablishing his kind of position as the patriarch of the family, uh, re-earning the respect of his daughters, kind of re-establishing his role as being the strong rock in their lives, and re-establishing kind of his credibility with them. It's kind of a core theme from the movie, and very much it's kind of a story of Matt kind of getting cucked and kind of just being a loser to some extent. Well, not really a loser, but just kind of had kind of eroded his life and kind of rediscovering his family's traditions, rediscovering his role as a father and kind of rebuilding his identity um, in the collapse in, in the face of his wife turning out to be someone he hadn't really expected. So unexpectedly, uh, after um, th her father attacks him, uh, his son, his daughter and her friend defend him. You have to understand his daughter kind of hated him and the other and her friend thought he was a loser but by this point in the time they've come to respect him as a man and they treat him as such. So the movie comes to its final phase. I know this is going to be very long but this is kind of a rather simple straightforward movie. Um, they come to the King family meeting where the dozens of cousins um, so they go to the thing and he's about to sign the uh, land sale, uh, selling the land away. And then he gives a big speech about um, them being Hawaiian and it being in their blood and the land being the legacy of their family. And that it's, it's up to them, the descendants, to not throw away what previous generations sacrificed for and what they handed down to them. He said, it's a legacy I'm going to leave for my children and I will not give it away. So the other cousins who want to sell away uh, the inheritance say that they'll fight him. And he says, I'm a lawyer. I, I know these things. You guys don't have anything. So after that, he goes back uh, to see his wife for a final time before they disconnect the life support. And um, the wife of Brian Spear, the guy his wife was having an affair with, comes to the hospital feeling that decency obliges her to. Um, she briefly admonishes Elizabeth's um, catatonic body, accusing her of trying to destroy her family, but then ultimately forgives her and leaves. She does seem to have a high uh, opinion of Matt and what he's tried to do throughout the film. Matt, finally, after seeing um, Julie uh, forgive her, feels that if, if the woman who... Um, who was much closer to her spouse than he was forgives him her or her then he has to as well so he he forgives his wife tenderly kissing her goodbye uh, they then scatter Elizabeth's ashes off of the coast the film concludes with the three of them sitting uh, the three people um, sitting together and watching television all wrapped in the quilt that Elizabeth had been lying in when she was in the hospital so not a particularly long or complicated movie, but I think it was very poignant. Um, it's it's just a very basic thing about the, the role of a man as a patriarch and his family, kind of rediscovering uh, your kind of your masculinity and rediscovering your place in the world. 
and the important role that kind of tradition, your family, and your inheritance plays. It also kind of focuses on the connection between past, present, and future. As the land is from the past, he represents the present, and it's something he wants to leave to his children as his legacy and the eternal legacy of his family. So that's that's The Descendants. I thought it was a good movie. I would recommend it. It's not the best movie ever, but it's it's good. If you like dramas or that kind of thing, um, I would recommend it. I'm a big George Clooney fan, even if he is a lib. This is Argon Templar, signing out.